Greetings, I'm Roger Newbold, and welcome to episode number 53 of the Experience Photography Vlog. Now, my partner, my good friend and editor for this v Vlog is Matt Rich, P.S., which is a real person, despite several weeks being bedridden due to an accident. I hope you're back with us. How you doing, my friend? Oh, <laughs> congratulations. He's alive. That, that's the best news. With over 50 episodes now under our belt, today we examine some perspectives of creative photography. They're causing conflicting choices on our behalf. We have been certainly the vocal champions of creating photographs that are stunning, that they are different, exciting, and well done. No holes barred generation of personalized images that simply come to dazzle. Today, I would like you to consider the semantics of involved in this discussion. Now, the semantics is the study of the meaning of language, and it can be applied to an entire text or to a single word. For example, destination and last stop technically mean the same thing, but a student of semantics will analyze the subtle shades of the meaning. We believe that what is said here could possibly confuse the situation. So for clarification, we're going to continue. Now, a conundrum refers to a question, which may be difficult or confusing to answer. Well, that doesn't seem to fit today's condition. A dilemma refers to a situation where a person faces a difficult choice between two equally undesirable options. Eh, this one may be a difficult choice, but doesn't seem to quite fit. Perplexed. <laughs> that alludes to a difficult, unpleasant, or maybe embarrassing situation. This certainly could be unpleasant or embarrassing to some. But one of my old favorites from England is a bit of a sticky wicket. This is a controversial issue that is difficult to handle or escape. <laughs> Controversy that's difficult to escape. Ah, we're here. So today, folks, we're going to be uh, a bit of a sticky wicketer, and we're stuck to the situation. Well, you'll never have to answer this issue for yourself. Now, it's just simply no fair looking at your neighbor's answer. You got to do it yourself. Now, I want you to look at this tornado in Monument Valley, Utah. You know, you've heard it before. Tap the K key to stop and look at this. When you're done, tap the K key and continue. But I want you to really look at this photograph of Monument Valley, Utah. Here we go. What do you feel about this image? Is it creative? Is it beautiful? Is it technically well handled? Now, take a peek at a tornado tearing up and scouring and dusting the Grand Canyon in Arizona. How about another whirling dervish vacuuming the carpet of southern Utah desert? Well, are they great or what? Will they catch the viewer's eye? Will it cause them to pause? Well, you bet they will, of course. Now, a big question. Will viewers believe that these are actually true? and photographically caught 
in live action. Will viewers on the opposite side of the world, or <laughs> say in New York City, realize that the chance of a tornado touching down in Utah or Arizona in the USA is about, uh, let's see, not not point one. Come on. You, you can read these viewers' comments. People tend to believe what they see, especially for, you know, us oldies that have, where a photograph implies truth. The following chart will just let you take a look and see something about tornadoes in Utah. This is from the, from the archive records, 53 to 97. Funny thing is that none of these very big windies occurred in the very southern portion of the state, where they have all been pictorialized in southern Utah. Now, for Arizona, you'll notice only one tornado touched down in the northern part of Arizona, anywhere remotely near the Grand Canyon. As seen on this map, you're reasonably safe, <laughs> reasonably safe, to make photographs in southern Utah, or northern Arizona, or nearly anywhere there are mountains. You know, you just shouldn't have any fear of being sucked up by a tornado. Now, being sucked up by aliens, well, that's a different story. Since we do live fairly close to Roswell, New Mexico, what we are getting to in this roundabout journey, is it ethical to create such a depiction and, and not somehow indicate that it's AI or artificial intelligence generated? I mean, this may be difficult or embarrassing, may be unpleasant or certainly a sticky wicket in some people's eye. To have to admit that, AI have been hand in hand in such majesty. To admit that they were not overtly threatened by the big Hoover at all, it might damage their ego. Well, in this vlog, we've used great number of photographs that have been enhanced with sky replacements, removal of detritus, a splash of extra color, a minor improvement. So, where do we draw the line? And what should the line look like? And who should draw the line? If a photographer adds sharpening and contrast, vibrance, maybe a little cropping and other changes that any lab or certainly any darkroom enthusiast might perform, shouldn't we just let it go? If a photographer adds more than minor changes, like a sky replacement or giant color overhauls, a moon, or something that may have been possibly occurred in reality. Should we add a, a letter E at the end just to tie the thing together to indicate that there has been enhancements? If a photographer adds a full-blown tornado or an alien spacecraft or a giant cockroach <laughs> or anything likewise. Should we add AI at the end of the title to indicate that artificial intelligence has been used? You know, we don't have the full answer to this one. These situations are all too new. So what do you think? Take a look at this uh, slot canyon with the moon. Maybe it had, should have the big E. 
the slot canyon might be possible if you could use a 200 millimeter from inside the cave, which you can't, to get the big moon and diffused flash, which may get you stoned by the others in your group. If that to light up the interior to make the cave uh, look like this. And getting to be there, you know, in the darkness and getting that permission is just highly unlikely. It could come together, Sean, but if being possible, I would indicate it with an E for enhanced. Now, <laughs> the impossible rainbow at Grand Canyon, uh, excuse me, Grand Teton, Wyoming, it gets a letter E for a similar designation. How about a mountain river? and a giant eclipsed moon. Let's give it an AI. The same goes for this tortured sky in the impossible funeral. Huh. AI. I believe, and rightly so, that it is the public that should be able to discern that the past two images are indeed farcical. But then again, Who's to say what some people believe? In the next image, there is a grouping that indicates that the supposed delicate arch, formerly a resident of Arches National Park, Utah, was magically transported into a more mountainous Bryce Canyon National Park, at least by the title. Eh. Wrong again, folks. Then to amplify the mystical powers at large, this entire assemblage was plunked down in the middle of some undisclosed highway somewhere. You know, the worst news is that 700 people commented. They liked and were overjoyed with this absolute outright absurdity. Oh my, we need some type of notification to preempt the naive public from falling into some uncharted black hole. Put down the fo phone, folks. Now look, look at this. At least one person thought this shot was great. Here's Flash and Gordon and Del Arden. They didn't even need seat belts in that rocket. How cool is that? Okay, it was me. But do you understand? Do you suppose we should indicate such images with an AI out of respect for the more <laughs> gullible souls on our planet? We believe that such designations do make sense. And they are truthful. Will such a system catch on? We have no idea. Will anyone be brave enough to admit that they too are willing to go to almost any length, great lengths, to produce such fantastic images? Mm, the question is totally perplexing. It may raise hurt feelings. It may eliminate confusion. You know, people may toss rocks in my direction or even break out in total insurrection at my suggestion. Maybe we should just let it go and not worry about it at all. <laughs> yeah, poor innocent people. I, for one, am interested in what you think. If, if you will, please please leave a comment. An impossible scenario of a tornado in the Tetons. Oh, come on, folks. Albert Einstein said, you can't resolve a dilemma with the very same mind that made it. So I believe you see what we need 
is more input. I, I can't decide it. I'm the one that asked the question. Life is full of dilemmas, but how we choose to handle them, you know, that's what defines who we are. So chip in. We'll be waiting. I want to hear from you. Now, our time is up for today. And, and man, my thinking cap is at full boil and needs to go cool down. <laughs> but if you enjoyed today's thoughts, subscribe to this channel. Tinkle that little bell for reminders. And, and most of us, most of all, uh, give us a big thumbs up. Keep on creating. No matter what, I don't care. So, until we meet here on screen again, you know, a tip of my hat to you. And a fond cheerio, my friends. Thank you.